Welcome to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal, where our goal is to change the way you practice dentistry by helping you achieve clinical, financial, and personal balance. Now, here's your host, T-Bone. All right, welcome back for another week, another episode, and we're hoping we have a great week for you. I hope everybody's doing well here in 2021. This week is a can't miss episode because I know I'm super interested in listening and learning from our guest, Dr. Tejas Patel. So I know you will be listening too. So before we get started and bring on our guest, let's turn it over to Meredith and introduce and listen to our number one sponsor, 3D Dentists. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Before we get started, I do have a review. So if you have not left us a review on Apple Podcasts, we'd really appreciate it. This one is short and sweet. And as they have said it, focused. It's called focused. This is the most focused, straight to the point dental podcast I've ever listened to. It's probably the only one they've listened to. (laughs) So that was nice. <laughs> That's all. That's all they said. <clears throat> but I just want to remind you guys. A man when, or a woman of few words. <laughs> yes. Focused. Very focused person. <clears throat> just want to remind everyone whenever you are ready to implement dental implants into your practice, we have a live patient program at 3D Dentist and we have our first ever um, express version of that coming in June. It's been a big hit, but I do have two spots left. So if you guys are interested in that, you can email me at meredith at 3d-dentist.com. So if I could give you guys a quick, uh, a little bit more details on our live patient implant program. Uh, We cover two types of live patients. You do extraction grafting with PRF, where you draw blood, mix it with the bone, and we'll do socket preservation with membranes. And then, of course, we do guided implant surgery on live patients as well. All of the live patients are provided for you. They come from our community, so it's charity work that we're giving Mm -hmm. back. Uh, And for the express program, you get to come here for, I think, five or six days. Six days. days And get it all done in one, one visit. Yeah. And by the time the express program comes around, we'll have a, a great announcement for everybody of where everybody will be staying and where to yeah. be held at. Uh, but I can't give too much away about that. But thank you guys uh, for listening to our favorite sponsor, 3D Dentists. But this week, I want to introduce our guest, Dr. Tejas Patel, is from Houston, Texas, but lives in and practices in Austin, Texas. And uh, I want to introduce him. Tejas, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Fantastic. Hi, good. I got to tell you, before we get started, the most, imp- you know, all the great things you've done, you've done some phenomenal social media, and that's what Thank we're here you. to talk about is, is how did you, you know, I want to, I want to look selfishly, I want to learn about myself, like how I can do what you're doing, because I feel like I'm falling farther behind, um, and how I can learn from you and, and kind of recreate to a certain degree, uh, certainly not as successful, uh, but the thing of all the videos I watched about you, guess which one stood out to me? On in, on Instagram or TikTok? I don't know what the hell video platform okay. I was listening um, to. And it, and I was in it. You were in it. Okay. Um, it was your parents. Of oh, all yeah, the videos, no. <laughs> the one with yeah. your parents, you know, because I yeah, I, I, it reminded I, me of your mom. That's yeah. why. <laughs> It's like getting words out yeah. of them, you know, and, 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 and then you're afraid to ask them to talk because you never know what yeah. the hell they're going to say oh, about you. Exactly. You never know when they're going to stop. You never know. Like once you get them going, yeah, you never know. But yeah, I love that. That video is like near and dear just because it's like, you know, they, they were just visiting my office randomly on a day and I was like, hey, come back here. Let's shoot a video. And they had no clue what's going on, but they rolled with it. And um, it was just genuine, and uh, yeah, I, I, that's one of my favorites. Did and just you, hearing the, the story of my name is always, like, cool, you know? Well, that's what I was going to ask you, because you're in Texas, and, and, yes. uh, in Spanishville, <laughs> basically, and your name is Tejas, but it's not Tejas, <laughs> so exactly. kind of fill our listeners in on this. So, um, you know, my name is Tejas. I was born in New York, and then when I was two years old, we moved to Texas, to Houston. And, um, you know, Tejas is a... a not as, I mean, it's a very common Indian name. And so when my parents moved to Texas, um, everyone was like, hey, your kid's name is Tejas or Tejas this, or they had no clue what people were saying because they're like, no, his name is Tejas. And then, you know, obviously then they come to realize that my name actually is Spanish for Texas. And um, yeah, I just kind of embraced it over the years. I, I've, 
I've studied a lot of Spanish. Uh, that was actually one of my majors in college, and um, I can speak Spanish fluently. So I get a kick out of it. You know, like when I speak to people um, in, within the Spanish community and I tell them my name is Tejas, they're like, they look at me so like they 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 think they ask the wrong question because they they think I'm telling them where I'm from or where I live, but I'm telling them my and literally I've had to pull out my driver's license to show people like, no, this is like literally my name. So <laughs> it's, it's just like a girl. It's a cool icebreaker. Cool story. You know, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I found you on Instagram and I thought it was really cool because I saw a lot of your videos and I thought I hadn't seen you yet. I was just looking at your office and a lot of your cases and I thought, you were totally up to date on all the social media and TikTok and everything. And you had hair. You looked super young. Whoa, and I thought whoa, he whoa. was a millennial dentist <laughs> killing the internet and the social media and everything. But really, you had years and years of cosmetic dentistry experience to go along with it. So I feel like you're above and beyond you know, what a lot of people have. Hey, dude, you're making me look bad. That's not good. I mean, he no. has a lot of hair. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> That's what we judge it off of nowadays. Oh, God. I can get, I can, I can glue, I can <laughs> glue can it on that. too. I can glue it on too. Okay? I'm not saying you glue it on, <laughs> just, but. I no, can. we just like yeah. to make jokes about hair around here, okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to throw that out there that you still have. No, but to Meredith's point, in all but seriousness, right. um, I want to talk about how you've leveraged social media to really build the cosmetic part of your practice. And, you know, honestly, I thought you, as Meredith was saying, I thought yeah. you were much younger uh, than you are just because of how hip. much you've embraced hip or so how much cool you've embraced <laughs> social media. But I mean, you graduated in 2002, so you're, you're pretty much my age and yeah, you're doing I mean, a I much better job on social media. So talk to us about how you got into social media, how it's affected your practice, how you've pivoted, you know, just kind of start, start talking to us. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, I've, through, throughout the years, like, you know, I almost have done I almost have done this like 20 years now, right? So, you know, throughout the years, I've, I've had various iterations of my practice. I've done the multiple locations. I've done the multiple associates. I've done the um, general, super, super, super general dentist. I've done implants, all in fours, Invisalign, everything. And what I've really loved the whole time is cosmetic dentistry. And so a few years ago, you know, I, I was thinking like, hey, man, if I'm going to do this for, for like 15 more years, say, for example, and I've done it for 15 years already, I was like at my halfway point possibly. And, and I said, you know, I'm going to do it the way I want it. And I've always wanted, um, you know, to do a, a, just a, a cosmetic practice focused on, you know, a veneer patient in the morning, veneer patient in the afternoon, you know, with some post-ops and consults. And, you know, I want to get down to like three and a half days and I don't want to have to mess with insurance and just a fee-for-service practice. So a couple of years ago, I, I started to set out on that path and, you know, we slowly em eliminated insurances um, but I also knew that if we're going to cut off that revenue source and kind of get rid and not get rid, but kind of segue to this way, we needed to supplement the, the marketing as well as the patient flow. And so that's when we started getting into like social media, um, started off with like just, you know, Facebook and trying to grow there, which I feel like, I mean, everyone starts there. Um, and then I started to look at how dental specialists market themselves, but more so how plastic surgeons market themselves. And so I just started to like reach out to plastic surgeons. Um, some of them had huge social media followings. And eventually I ended up um, kind of recruiting one, uh, my, my social media who, who's with me right now from a local plastic surgeon who had a really big social media following. And so we've kind of grown our brand that way as well. So just, you know, I kind of honestly got tired of playing the direct mail game. I got okay. tired of playing the, the Google SEO, like you, you know, c c for cosmetic dentistry it's, or implants or a lot of dental terms. Anything, it's super anything that makes money, it's oh, competitive. Yeah, it's super competitive and super expensive if you're going to do AdWords and things like that. And so, you know, through social media, I, I came to the understanding of like, okay, I know it's going to take time. I know it's going to take creativity and effort. And if I make time for those things, um, I can kind of set myself apart. And 
also just like show a side of myself or show a side of what we do that, you know, as we started to kind of show more of that behind the scenes, like it's really exploded in the patient's interest or consumers and being very transparent with things has been amazing for our practice. And, you know, I will say like now we're to a point and we're still growing, you know, we're still trying to create and document and, and grow our business and grow our social media. Um, I will say, you know, I went from, you know, an advertising budget of, you know, maybe social media being like a 10% to now it's like 80% of what we spend on. Um, not, not ads and things like that, but just through our social media manager and things like that. But, um, it's really exploded our practice, um, really grown our practice, really actually when, when I first hired my social media manager, I was like, Hey, I want to become like the place to go in Austin for cosmetic dentistry. And what has happened is like with the internet and social media, all these barriers have been broken down. So we we become a cosmetic destination for people around Texas, which was huge. And then also we have people flying in from other cities. And so I, and, and I, I think like, I mean, obviously in their town, there's great cosmetic dentists, right. But you know, they're still coming to us. And I think when, I mean, when I talk to them, it's like, well, you were transparent, you know, I liked your videos. I've been following you for a long time. Um, and they just built that trust within myself. And obviously like interacting with my team, I have an amazing team that helps me. And so I think all those things have just like culminated into this like cosmetic practice that's been built um, through social media, which which to me is like the new word of mouth. Like it just spreads faster and broader. Like it's, it's pretty crazy. And we've grown our practice, you know, through COVID too, you know, through a pandemic and through limited travel, but we've still grown the practice. And so, I mean, I even think after, you know, when, when travel becomes a little bit more regular again, like, that's just gonna we're just gonna grow even more which is which is crazy and yeah there's there's so much to social media that i think deters people um but and and, and maybe it, it might not be a for everyone but for us it's really like really like just blown up our practice which is oh, awesome i have a lot of questions I think during COVID, yes, people have spent <laughs> way more time on social media than before. So 100%. that's great for you. Yeah. You know, that yes. was a way to definitely grow during COVID. All right. I want to back up. Okay. Yes. Because, um, all right. So I'm a dentist listening to you and I've got a relatively busy, if not busy general practice. And you know what? It sounds phenomenal to get off social media, to do sexy, fancy dentistry on patients who all love you, quote unquote, love you and are super easy to work with. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, but, um, yeah. <laughs> what was the transition from a traditional practice to this practice? It wasn't like cold Turkey. It wasn't overnight. How, how did you, what did you do? How did you balance it? You know, how, how did you make that happen? How did you, how did you balance the two? Yeah. So I, I literally went from two, two offices, two practice locations, like one in a suburb area, like a neighborhood kind of like You're a typical Indian two. man. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then, and then I took over this downtown location I'm at right now. And, and I was doing both practices had, uh, associates had a, a very large team. Um, and I thought, I honestly thought I was going to go that direction of like, I'm going to create this multiple business model, you know, multiple practices and, you know, maybe eventually sell to corporations or whatever it may be. Right. We all, we all have this sure. like dream. Right. So, um, it was getting really stressful and I couldn't balance it. It was, uh, you know, I felt like I didn't have a good management team in, in place, which is, you know, due to my, due, due to my, uh, lacking. And so I, a lot of the stress fell on me and obviously performing, being the highest producer, you know, performing like, you know, high, high, high volume, um, big procedures. I mean, it's just a lot on the person. So I didn't find that sustainable. And so I sold one practice and then I started to downsize. And so, um, at that point we were on, uh, five insurance plans. Um, now I'm down to like one location, five insurance plans. And we were still doing, uh, you know, we were like number one for Invisalign two years in a row as a GP. 
then I got like really, I'd always been into implants. Um, and I love what you you're doing with your life. Oh, courses. That you. sounds amazing. Yeah. I wish that was around uh, a couple of years ago. So I didn't have to, I mean, it was, it was a great experience for me to fly internationally to do live patient, but I think it's so amazing that you're doing it here. So oh, thank you very uh, I'm much. excited for, you're your welcome students, to come out anytime sure. you want. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And then, so I got into implant dentistry, did a lot of Invisalign. I did everything, you know, and at the same time we were still doing cosmetic and, you know, I had three hygienists and just a lot to manage. And I just, I, I just don't want to do that. And so, um, I started just slowly removing things, you know, I started just saying no to things. So first thing we, we, we stopped doing, and I'm not saying this is for everyone at all. Right. So, um, we stopped doing new Invisalign cases and then we, started to like last year we last year we, we we did not start any all on four cases um we still had some in the works that we were working on things like that um and so we started saying no to certain things uh over a course how of do like you say years. no to thirty thousand dollar cases <laughs> <laughs> i thought of i really analyzed what went into it um the not just the over but the time the stress um and, and I'm, we'll still do, I'll still do single implants and posterior implants and like, you know, home run cases, but I'm talking like all on four, you know, right. all on four, double art surgery, um, non-guided, you know, full surgery. Oh, that sounds know, horrible. Anesthesiolog <laughs> yeah. Anesthesiologist in the office. I mean, that's, that's a lot of, that that's backbreaking work, you know? And um, so I, over the, I would say, you know, it didn't happen overnight at all. And I'd say over a couple of years, I'd say two years. I, we eliminated insurances and that was, you know, maybe every six to eight months we'd take every six months, we'd take out an insurance, um, never went over well at all. But, um, again, I was always trying to supplement for whatever we were taking away. So slowing down so that, to speed up. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, that's when so, the social media really came into play. So yeah. what I, what I really liked that you said was, that what I heard is that you were intentional, mm -hmm. that you you had oh, a dream, yes. okay, that uh -huh. you committed, that you were committed, that for the bumps, because a lot of people they get uh, they get scared by the bumps of dropping insurance. You get enough patients because I heard it in your in your statement uh, that it didn't go over well. Every time you get patients, they give you pushback uh -oh. about the insurance, and you're like, oh man, maybe I'm making a mistake. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Hundred percent. And yes. then and they self sabotage a little bit, and, and it sounds like basically. Your win in this was the fact that you were committed to doing this. And you actually said no. I think yeah. people say they're going to say no. And then when the case comes, they're like, yeah. well, we can just do this one. Well, I, yeah, I, I have that problem when I'm talking to women all the time. I just have to actually yeah. say no sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. You all wish. Right. <laughs> I do wish. All right. Okay. So now we've talked about the transition. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I liked as well is that... Um, it's not like this took five or 10 years. You're talking a few couple of years, basically, to get to where, would yeah. you say, look, let's take the, the high growth mindset and the whole, like, I'm a driven personality out of it. If, if your practice was to be exactly what it is right now, would you be happy with it? A hundred percent. Okay. So, like so in a couple of years, you've gotten to a point where you're happy. 100% yes. Yeah. So I, I want the listeners yeah. to hear that. I want us, people to hear that, listen, that what took other people 10 years mm -hmm. can be done in five years. What took you two years, not exactly knowing what you were doing, can now be done in a year with a little bit of guidance and coaching and determination. So, and see, that's, that's part, of, part of what we try to teach people or what people need to learn is that what took somebody 20 years can now be done in 10 years because they, they've learned the lessons. Right. What took me 10 years can be done in five years. What took somebody else five years took you two years. What took you two years is going to take the next person a year because we get better and we learn each iteration uh, down, down the line. 100%. And also just like, I mean, through technology, like the speed at which things are changing, it's just, it's, it's amazing. And it's, it's exciting. And it's, I mean, it is scary, you know, um, but it's exciting how quick things are changing. But I agree with you 100%. Like, you know, the, the journey to become a quote unquote, like cosmetic dentist, you know, that took, took me, you know, I'm, I'll be in my 20th year next year, uh, to get to a point where I'm like, where I want to be, I mean, someone else could literally do that in a lot less time with the proper guidance. And I think just like you had said, Meredith, too, just like like sticking to your guns and being able to say no and and just 
like if that's your vision and that's what makes you happy and that's what brings you joy and that's the schedule you want and that's the patients you want to see and the cases you want to do i think just building that vision and seeing th really thinking about i mean it definitely took a lot of analysis and soul searching of this is what i want and this is how i want to spend my days and then just reverse engineering the steps in order to get there you know and and you know, it took me two years. Maybe someone else, like you said, would take. Did less. you have sleepless Maybe nights? I mean, it, I'm assuming it wasn't easy. No, it was not easy because I, I, it's almost, yeah, there was a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of second guessing of like, is again, this worth anytime it? we got, is it worth it? We get right. pushback from patients about insurance. Like, you know, my, my, I mean, this person's upset, this person's upset, you know, like, uh, you know, and, and obviously that's hard to hear because. I, you know, I'm a dentist, I'm a people pleaser, you know, I was a, you know, like, I am still a general dentist, but it's in my inclination to try to be able to help everyone and do do everything for everyone, and please everybody and help everybody. But um, not saying no, I mean, saying no now just helps me just really dial in how I envision how I want my business to be and my lifestyle to be and be able um, to say yes to the cases. Yeah, and there's nothing are, nothing yeah. wrong with that at all. Yeah, exactly. All right. all right, next question for you. Okay, next step. Okay, we've transitioned yes. from the GP, multiple location GP. And by the way, I love hearing from people that multiple locations isn't the panacea that people have it made out to be. Yeah. I, I'm a big believer and champion of the single location. Uh, I'm yeah. a big believer in multiple dentists, but single location, multiple dentist sure. practice. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big believer in that. And I think that's the easiest way to a phenomenal lifestyle. Maybe not the richest, but a phenomenal lifestyle. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And, you know, having multiple like, locations and tasting that and experiencing that for several years and like the associate stuff. And um, it was just it was just not not for me, you know, right. and, and I think that that was part of the soul searching and the, the sleepless nights of like. You know, am I am I doing this because this is? Not, I'm not going to say a quick buck or anything like that, but like, is it is it? Am, it, am I motivated by this growth, this growth and this entrepreneurial like vision of having a multiple you know business kind of model, or is it me who prefers like a like a, a slower pace, just you know, couple couple of patients a day, you know, higher volume cases, really detail. Um, I love the the cosmetic part, and I really had to do some soul searching. Like what what is going to make me happy and what's true to myself, you know, and, and that, that did take some sleepless nights and a lot of thought, but I'm glad I went through that in order to get to where I am. Okay. So you knew you wanted, um, to get a bigger presence on social media. So you hired someone with experience that had come from a plastic surgeon's office. So they did also have experience in cosmetics, different types of cosmetics, but in um, cosmetics. And then you um, used them to help you grow this portion of the cosmetics. And then did you ever feel like even with them, I mean, we've had different types of marketing people and we've gotten stuck and it's hard to stay consistent. And I would say that's probably most people's problem is staying consistent on the content creation portion. Or yeah. did they do that for I'd you? Say, no, like, I mean, it, it's, I always feel like it's like a team effort um, right. with everything. I will say when we started, um, we did, we, we did do it on our own. Okay, and we did try that. Okay. And, yeah. and, and I do think for people just getting into it, that's what I would recommend doing. Um, just starting on your own, maybe have, having one of the assistants, maybe film more. Um, uh, again, at some point, we'll talk about some resources that I'll share with you guys to come up with content ideas and stuff like that. Um, but first, we did it on our own and we started small. And I think if they're starting on their own, just maybe setting like a weekly goal of like, posting once a week, if they're starting from zero, you know, like right. posting once a week, that could be a good attainable goal on one platform, you know, maybe it's uh, Facebook or Instagram, or maybe it's multiple platforms, but it's still posting once a week, just to get that consistency. And maybe assigning someone within your team um, to be the person to either manage those accounts or help film or both. Um, and also being comfortable to start asking patients if it's okay to film something, if it's 
uh, their you know testimonial on video, if it's part of the procedure, if it's um, sharing their before and after photos of their mask. If people are, are concerned about showing their face, then maybe you can ask them just if you can show their, their mouth, you know, where you, you don't have their name or tag or anything like that. Um, but that's how we started. We started on our own. Then I, I did hire like a local um, social media guy. And, and we and this is like a couple of years ago. So now, like, we're doing the generic person, Are you referring stuff. to an agency? Uh, it was actually a, a patient of mine okay. who started a, a social media company, and now he does SEO. So he's kind of segued out of social media. But um, and he was like back then he, we were doing the generic stuff. We're doing happy birthday, Susan. Like you know, Susan's been with us like twenty years, whatever. And then um, ha you know, uh, happy Independence Day. Like we we're doing the generic stuff, like enough to get by. Okay. Right? Um, and then I. But that felt doesn't like move the needle, be... does it? Oh no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's enough, it's enough to get started. I feel like if, if people are comfortable with that, just to have that to kind of, you know, I feel like people kind of go through iterations, right? That's like saying That's a like, happy hamburger day. Yeah. I was, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that, that too that. about like getting started and then people give up after two months, right? Because they don't see a difference. Yeah. And so yeah. moving the needle, I think yeah. is what I was meaning by that. So what, what moved the needles for us dramatically is when we hired the social media manager who, who was with the plastic surgeon at that time. And this person was and, exclusively with your practice? Uh, no, I mean, she, she worked for the plastic surgeon. She had multiple clients. Okay. So we had, I, I think when she started, I had her coming in the office maybe once a week, maybe four times a month. That was kind of like what we were okay. doing or maybe six times a month. Do you mind me and, asking, can you mind going through what was a day like when she, he or she would come over? Yeah, so, and given this is kind of like her background, right? With this plastic surgeon, she found that when he was documenting the surgeries, People like he would do a lot of- see that. Yes, and so he, they kind of built their social media their growth off of that. So she would be in the surgery center filming procedures. He would be talking about the procedure, what he's doing, why he's making this incision, um, what kind of sutures he's using, what kind of technique he's using to do like uh, an augmentation or, or anything like that. So she's documenting this. So she said, well, let's try that. And so it was very uncomfortable. <laughs> like, for you. Very uncomfortable for, for me at first, because yeah. one, I'm not used to like speaking on well I, it wasn't on me on cam well some of it was me on camera but some of it was the procedure and me talking about what i was doing working without my light that i'm used to just to get better film quality so it's not all shine you know blurred out so we can see teeth and things like that um but i, I just got used to it you know i mean she kept kind of encouraging me hey that was good like we'll just keep, like, keep trying it and so we kept doing it and so we we did build part of our social media a much of our social media is based on behind the scenes of a procedure, mostly veneers, start to finish like every single step, um, like a chef on a, sh a cooking show shows every single step, we're trying to show every single step. And they're not literally um, showing you prepping for two hours or hour or hour and a half or whatever it is. No, 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 no. Like, um, Six seconds. we'll do clips. Yeah, we'll, we'll do like if it's if it's TikTok or like an Instagram story, it'll be like 30 second clips. But what I'm trying to do, like say for example, a veneer prep, I'm trying to get to a point of like, okay, this is you know arch form correction with this burr, because mm -hmm. uh, people are actually into. It's it's surprising that what we find normal, like other people are just curious about, like these these details that we're like, yeah, it's Why etching. Do you care like, what's what the big burr deal? I'm like, using? Yeah, they're like it's to etching. Know what you're Who cares? Using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's it's just it's just topics for people's conversation and people find it interesting to when people pull back the curtain and, and and reveal like behind the scenes and so that's what we're trying to show like the behind the scenes of the procedure so it's not as fearful for patients when they can see that transparency of like oh this guy's doing a minimal prep veneer versus when i looked up veneers on google i saw of teepees. crown prep and teepees <laughs> like teeth yeah teeth. <laughs> yes yeah and so i think when people see that they're like oh wow i thought it was supposed to be some way but this guy's doing it differently let me let me let me find out what this guy's doing differently you know all right so let me back up for a second okay because i want to digest yes. that into for the audience because that was uh, because i've been trying to do this just just a little background on me i've been trying to do this for 
two years now. Three? I've hired three different people. And, okay. Sorry, five different people and fired them all. <laughs> so they're trying to do the same thing and they just don't get what I'm after. I believe that you educate the consumer. Okay, and that you just show them what you're doing, why you're doing it, so that they come Mm -hmm. prepared, they come with their questions answered. They literally should be walking into your office already knowing what you do, why you do it, and your job is just just to tell them. They should know how much it costs, everything, and your job is just to say, yes, yes, this works for you, and this is the technique I'm going to use, and all of that. So. What, what I loved hearing from you, because this is, this is why I failed at this. I was trying to do this every day from the beginning. And what I loved hearing from you is that you were starting with this one day a week, essentially four days a month. Mm-hmm. And somebody would come there. Obviously, you would pre-schedule the right cases or the case that day. Yeah. And they would document. And this person's sole job was to be there, to get in the way, to stop you when they needed to stop you. You had to learn to allow them to stop you. You had to learn to understand that the lighting was in the way or whatever it was and allow them to do their job to help you. And then obviously you had to have the wherewithal to allow it to take its time to start working. Yes. And I, I will say, even when we hired that social media manager, about six months in, I was like, oh, is this, is this worth it? Is this working? Um, What's a you know, budget maybe I should for go something back like to... that? So when, when she first started, and I, I want to say maybe it was six days a week, I'm oh, sorry, six days a month, sorry. She was, okay. It was about like 2,000, I think about 2,000 to 2,500 per month. Okay. But that included the time and in six, your office and the time outside of your office to do oh, everything. Yes, correct. So it's not like you're paying them and that so, much for six days. It's obviously posting, there's, there's a lot of outside She was getting work. the content out too. She was getting the content and at that rate, it was X amount of posts per week or per month or you know, maybe X amount of posts on Instagram, maybe X amount of posts on the feed, X amount of posts on the stories. Um, so it's kind of like within that, that budget. And so since then we've like expanded and grown and brought her on more. And, and now we, you know, we pay her more now that she's doing more for us. But um, we started at that and like six months into it, I was really questioning it. I was really questioning. It. I was like, you know, I'd, I was like, you know, t- at six months, 2000, you know, $12,000 in, I was like, is this worth it? Like, is it really worth it? Like, you know, we're seeing incremental growth in our numbers and our followership. Um, and then what finally clicked was, you know, we're in Austin and we had a patient reach out who lives in Dallas and says, I'm, I've done my research. I was either, I'm either flying out to LA to get this done, or I'm going to come to you. You're a little bit closer. Um, I've got miles and all that stuff. I'm, I'm just going to come to you. And so, we literally in two appointments did her smile makeover and that 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 once we once we did that i was like oh my god like we're on to something like this is like she like we did a facetime consultation um i mean we got records when she came in we got her cleaned up we're able to block our schedule enough for her and we got it done and she was super happy and so i just like and then then it just started to grow like you know that was like the first one like two years ago and then like every other every other month it became more frequent and then it just just like i said it's just been growing exponentially which has been awesome all right so let me if you, okay i i have lots of questions <laughs> okay <laughs> yes. um and I, and by the way thank you so see so again it goes back to your concept at the very beginning you talked about being transparent and i thank you for being transparent with us today and our yeah. listeners about everything all right so So it's like you did let me this stop you six... let me... Go ahead. Yeah, let me ask you something. I, I just want to say something. The things you just said, like when you said a patient comes in, they should know what you're doing, how you're going to do it, what technique you're going to use, how much, even how much it's going to cost. Everything you said is the basis for my social media. Yeah. Everything you said is, is, the, is when I think of content, when I think of ideas, I want patients coming in who are pre-sold. They know how much it is. They've seen our work. They've seen our before and afters. They, they, they have an idea of my team because they've spoken to them either on FaceTime or on the phone. They've kind of seen me through social media. They can kind of get a hint of my personality. Um, they've heard my voice maybe talk about a procedure. Um, so I want them 
like not I don't want to say I mean I want them sold before they come in right. you know I want them sold that they're a making for, a good decision. It should be a formality at that point when they're coming in that basically yes. can you do the case is it right to do yeah all that other stuff should be done. like in, in a perfect 100%. world they should have already applied for financing if that's the hold up all of these things can be done because you yep. can I don't know if you read the book called they ask you answer from Marcus Sheridan but these are some of the, the concepts that he talks about Not yet, but I will, yeah. in, yeah. in the okay. book it, it's it's all built around that but uh, so anyway, my, my, I want to go back to my point because I want to come back to the yes. content uh, is, all right, <clears throat> so not every dentist has the, the personality to hold through. Sure. When did you see, you, so you talked about it took six months maybe before you started seeing results. And then what was the acceleration? Because I talk about this when we teach sleep apnea is that most dentists give up right when they're about to see acceleration. So imagine if you had given up one week earlier, or even oh, that totally. day that you first had the thing, you would have laid all that groundwork for the time that you were yeah. getting ready to see that just massive acceleration. And that's that's the mistake that we all make in business is we, we have a great idea. We put the time, effort and money in. We just don't stick with it. Yeah, I'd say for social media, I'd say at least a year. Okay. And, and that's speaking from experience. And I'm not saying a year of posting every day or anything like that. I'm just saying a year of consistency. Hopefully it starts off small and then incrementally gets gets more frequent over that year. But I think a, a solid year of staying consistent, like you should be seeing what, whatever your result is. You know, if it's, if you want to do more implant cases or more Invisalign cases or more veneer cases, whatever, whatever you're trying to promote. Um, I do think for, for myself, it like, and this is part of like, like when I was like, kind of like trying to figure out like how I wanted to brand myself, like, like the message is clear. Like we do veneers, like we do porcelain veneers. That's what we do. Like, I'm not trying to be anything else. So that message is very easy to get across. Like, cause everything I focus on is based on that. All those components of how much it is, how long does it take? Blah, blah, blah. Like all that stuff is based on that. When you're trying to do multiple things. I think it's, it still can be done. It just might take a little bit longer. Cause if you imagine I, I drove home the same message for a year, right on veneers. So if I, if I try to do that same message over the course of like three different subjects, it will still happen. It just might take a little bit longer for each of those to peak. If that makes sense. I want to, I want to uh, back up and ask you to clarify one thing on that. When you mm -hmm. said you drove home the same message for a year, I want people to understand that you literally drove the same message over and over and over again, because one of the things yeah. that kind of gets, as we talk about content is people like, well, I talked about, I talked about prepping veneers Last three week. months ago. Yeah. Like yeah. clearly I yeah. don't have to talk about it again. That's, that is no. the exact opposite. You got to talk about it 100%. over and over and over and over yes. and never end. Like, like there's honestly, I would argue that you never need to make new content. You was, just yeah. need to have the same thing over and over again same cases yeah and you have to show it too like you you talk about it and then you show it right and then um yeah i mean there's a great book called story brand i don't know if you've, you've read yeah, it and i'm gonna Little. look up the book yeah. And you, yeah yeah and i think that the clarity of a message for consumers is like i, I mean I, I i think about that that clarification so much of like we need to make it simple like it takes you know two or three appointments to get your smile this is where you apply for financing this is how much it costs like we're going to be transparent like this is what we, you know and, and i think as as clear as we can get i mean we're so the opposite as dentists like we, you know we want to regurgitate min, uh, millimeters of preparation three millimeters of preparation yes. with <laughs> yeah. three different burrs yeah. one is going to be coarse yes. you know it's a two striper from premiere yeah, yeah, and then yeah. i'm going to use my yeah. brassler made in china and <laughs> it's exactly. unbelievable so and when people you... just want to know are they going to look good? That's it. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. are they going to look better? It's, yeah. uh, and, better. And along the line of what Donald Middle talks about, it's essentially everything should be three steps. It's book your consult, yep. Yep. choose us, smile with confidence. Yep. <laughs> it's literally, yep, exactly. it's got to it. be book your, con book your consult, trust me, yep. smile with confidence. And, and that's what, and that's honestly, it. that's all people want. People don't want to think about yep. it too much. They just, they just want to yep. make me trust you. It's really what yep. they're asking. Oh, 100%. So you so you have patients now flying in. Um, 
for the veneers and I've seen on some of your stories that your team members are sending out things. So talk to us about that. What services are you providing to make this easier? What does it take for someone to get to your office, to get veneers? Yeah. How many trips is it? How do you cater to out of town people? So, I mean, ideally we still, even for out of town, we do recommend like if you, if they're able to come in for the three visits, that's the ideal situation. And what are the three visits? come in for their visit? One so is consult consultation records, you know, okay. consultation records, impressions, x-rays, cleaning. Of that. Okay. Um, so basics, right? Right. Second appointments prep and get okay. temporaries and then third appointment seat. Okay. So not much different, you know, it's not like we're doing anything magical. magical. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the, that's the ideal way to do it. Now, if they, you know, have a dentist, they're, they're up with their cleanings, they've got x-rays that they can send us, they just had their teeth cleaned. Um, and they're comfort and they and for a time constraint, or flight constraint, they can only come in twice. Then what we've been doing, um, and we kind of got this idea from, you know, Smile Direct Club, mm -hmm. in a sense of shipping a patient uh, trays, and then impression material. Discus Dental so, used to make these things that they, they had like little pouches that people would uh, yeah. do self-impressions with. Yeah, exactly. And that's basically the concept of what we're, we're, we're doing. And what we'll end up doing is having them, when, when they get the package, they'll get on FaceTime with my team member. And this is the same team member who's mailed it out, who's talked to them on FaceTime before. Um, so she already has a relationship with them. And she's basically walking them through when they're doing it. She's like, call me when you do it. And I'm going to walk you through it. So she's talking, you know, showing like maybe even doing it with them, like mixing it with them at home, here in our office and showing them how to put the tray in and everything like that. And so, you know, we have a relationship with our lab of, you know, if we're just doing the upper, you know, typically, you know, six, eight, 10, whatever, if they can get the incisal edges and the, ideally if they can get the whole tooth, that's beautiful, but we've seen some kind of messed up impressions. But I was going to ask that's how fun. those have been turning out. <laughs> yeah. But, but surpri surprisingly, when, when my team members on the phone with them, right. they actually come out really, really good. Talk them through. And it. so if they're going to come down for two visits, um, I'll, I'll still have a wax up done by my lab and I'll preface my lab and tell them, look, these are not the best impressions. Read as much as you can. I just, just need incisal edges. Yeah. Just get me close. You know, we're getting a lot of photos and even video from the patient of their smile, close up, lateral views, headshots, so I can start to assess. And, and I've had a conversation with them about the design. Do they like the like? Do they like the size of their teeth? Do they like the color? What do they want to change? And so the same things I would do in a consultation in person, I'm basically trying to do that virtually. Um, and then getting all the, that, that records and information. And so by the time they show up, we do have a wax up. I probably will have to make more modifications to that wax up because of that impression or, you know, how good or bad that impression was. So we intentionally block a little bit more time in our schedule for out of town patients who've done their own impressions. So I can have more time to modify their temps. All right, so here's what I'm hearing. To adjust for uh, out-of-town customers, you need to have a way to communicate with them virtually. FaceTime is pretty easy. It sounds like you're using 100%. pretty much using FaceTime. Yep. You need to have yep. a way to get records from them, and so you're sending yep. them impression material in trays. So I assume you're sending them multiple trays, multiple sizes, more than adequate yep. amount of impression material. You need to have a laboratory partner that doesn't expect perfection in the impressions <laughs> that can yep. uh, work with you. Yep. Uh, and, and I happen to know who you're working with, so Bob does a great job with some of that. Yes, and, um, yes. Yeah. And he does a great job of turning everything around in, in a week as well, which is phenomenal. 100%. Um, 100%. And then, and then you need to have a schedule that accommodates the extras that you have to do in terms of making up for the lack of impressions and things like that. Uh, and yes. and uh, so, so it sounds like really you're doing all the same things. You're just doing a lot of it virtually. I'm sure some surprises yeah. show up when the patients oh, come 100%. in. You know, maybe they have a big-ass cavity, a tooth needs to come out. Yeah. How do you handle some – I don't want to get too deep in that, but how do you handle sure. some of that stuff? I mean, we're, we're good to go on the fly. I mean, having the basis of like being a super general dentist, yeah. like in my background, like um, we're ready for anything. Right. Um, but if it, in photos or x-rays, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, in photos and, and FaceTime, like we're really trying to get like good views of the teeth we're working on. 
And I mean, if they have a bombed out tooth um, or they've sent over x-rays and they their mouth is a mess and they have lots of decay and teeth that need to be extracted and implants, I'm telling them go locally. If they if they still want to if they still want to come to us for their smile, I say go locally. Get your teeth cleaned. Get your get your cavities taken care of. Get any broken teeth extracted. Go ahead and even do your implants. Go and do everything. Get the foundation right, and we'll just make it pretty when you're done. That's okay. it. Um, but if they come in with like large decay, like we're ready to to handle that. You know. I like we're a super general dentist. Yeah, I mean I that's, like that. that's <laughs> my career over. You know, yeah. that's all of our right. careers. Yeah. You know, it's, yes, it's setting 100%. ourselves up. I mean, that to me is one of the importance importance of having a good foundation. Uh, you know, for me, early in my career, it was a new procedure yeah. every year. Because yeah. if you want, look, I, here's what I say. If you want to be a good cosmetic dentist, you got to be able to do endo because you never know. You got to yeah. be able to extract teeth because that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to yeah. be able to place implants because you don't want to, you know, especially if your patient's coming out of town, suddenly you're going to start adding four or five months, multiple visits, craziness, yeah. you know, just almost easier just to stick the implant in yourself. So that's where a yeah. lot of these things come into play. All right. So we've talked about transitioning your practice. We've talked about a little bit about consistency. I do have an additional question there. What, what is your suggestion? Once a week to be committed in the beginning for a few months and then twice a week? Because I look at you and I see your stuff multiple times a day and I just look at it and say, I just give up. I don't even want to try. So, so talk to me a little bit about on the consistency part. What is yeah. a good stair-step method to get there? So the first thing I would say is this, like before you figure out how many times you're going to post, I think figure out where you're going to post um, because there's obviously like different platforms. There's Facebook, there's uh, Instagram, there's TikTok, there's YouTube, there is LinkedIn. Um, I almost think, you know, even Google reviews, like that's Google My another business, yeah. place where you, yeah, Google My Business. That's that I consider that part of like social media because that's reputation management, right? So um, I think you pick like one or two of those that you really want to focus on. And Just if, one or if two. the person's so not like six, not, I, I think, I think I would have an account set up on six. Right. Like, you know, I would, you know, set up your profile, get, get some basic information. So, you know, for SEO and stuff like that, it can link back to you. Um, but I would have a presence on six and then focus on maybe two or three. And if the person's not comfortable, like on camera, or they, they like more behind the scenes stuff, then, you know, like what you're doing with a podcast, a podcast could be a great resource, you know, if people aren't comfortable on camera, um, if people are more comfortable writing, then, you know, maybe even doing something like a blog. I, I mean, I, I think they just have to find what's comfortable with them to start off with. And I definitely would recommend, you know, once a week is a great start on maybe two or three of these platforms. Um, and, and I think just staying consistent with it because there's going to be times when it is not worth it. Like there's not much growth. The needle you're is not to moving an audience at all. Of zero at some times. Mm -hmm. You're talking to, you're hearing zero comments. No one's liking your stuff. No one's looking at your stuff, but you just have to stay consistent. And I, and I think once you get a couple of months into it, you'll see what's gaining traction, like what type of content people are getting interested in. And then you start to like find your voice. Like say for example, like on, on TikTok, like we started off like, I had no idea how to use TikTok until COVID, until quarantine. And then I was like, I'm gonna learn TikTok. And so at first I was putting photos up there and then I started to do like a little bit of like voiceover, kind of like funny stuff, um, not really dances or anything like that. And then we started to post before and after videos of people's smiles. And then we started posting procedure stuff. And when we start to get procedure stuff and like some of the ushy gushy in the mouth, that stuff either looks interesting or weird or just unusual. Like pimple popper. Um, yes, that concept of like, of people are obsessed with some of this stuff, like the squishy gushy stuff. And so I kind of started to find our voice of like dental stuff. So I was like, I, then there was a phase where it really wasn't me on that, uh, on that feed as much. It was mostly like procedure stuff. And so I think like finding your voice of like how you want your page or how you want to set up. And I think just like, honestly, like, just like we do with a lot of things, find like a, a person you emulate that you like their page or like the way things look or, or what kind of posts that they're doing. And you can totally like start to follow that lead and just do it like once a week and slowly build on that. Okay.
All right, excellent. And then, okay. All right, so last last thing I want to talk about, because I, I do appreciate you taking time with us. And, um, yeah, thank you. Here's what I found. Most dentists, me included, mainly me, <laughs> <laughs> most dentists get stuck and overwhelmed by the content, content or the concept yes. of creating content. How do you come mm -hmm. up with content consistently, and what advice do you give people about this whole yeah content i mean look because i look sure. i want to be clear about this i i loathe the boomerangs of people yeah. dancing and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, we, we make him do it because well but but to yes. my my point in that is it does nothing to make people understand what the hell we do it may make them think i'm funny and shit but it doesn't answer how much does this cost what it is that am yeah. i selling what can i do for them what's the outcome they can expect why am i better than everybody i i think boomerangs yeah. make me look stupid i mean I, I that's that's my take on it and i know it's an important component mm -hmm. of what you do but that is not content to me content is something that moves the needle so let, let's talk about that so I actually feel like it is good content. And I would say the boom, if, if you ever see me in a boomerang, it's not my idea. It's probably one of my team members, you know? Yeah. So I think having a support, a supportive team that's excited about it is essential, you know? Um, I think when, it, so I, I, I think like a boomerang or something funny or humorous actually makes you, this, this is, I think this is really important because it makes you relatable and you. when people when when yeah, it humanizes you and when people find you relatable they will then reach out to you on direct message yeah. on instagram or or take whatever, whatever medium it is because they feel like you're approachable and you've broken down a little bit of a barrier or wall and if they feel like oh i could i could maybe like let me just reach out to him and then when you exceed their expectations or, you know, if you're responding or you have a team member respond to them and they get excited that you responded to them. So that little boomerang, right, that little personal effect ended up creating a, a connection between you and someone else. And so, yes, it has nothing to do with what, what you do and how, how you, you know, you might be you, how you're, yeah. you are better than your competition or whatever. But it, it, it within the world of social media it makes you more approachable and relatable. And so, I think that is huge. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't want to come across, I, I want to clarify something here. I'm not saying <laughs> boomerangs aren't- You're gonna do a boomerang right now, yeah. No, I, I just, I don't want to say boomerangs aren't an important component, but yeah. I see too many offices, that's all they do. All they sure, do is, sure. ah, and back and <laughs> yeah, forth, yeah. back and forth. Yes. And, and, and sure you're relatable, but nobody knows what you're relatable for. And my yeah. point in, in this is not that boomerangs aren't important, but at some point you've got to go beyond that. So let's talk oh, about, 100%. Your, let's talk about the content. Let, give yeah. me your spiel on content and I'll be quiet for a little bit. So, so my content is like, I'd say it, it's focused on a few things. One that were relatable. So that would have to be um, content based on me or my team or how I interact with people. So like who I am and how relatable I am. Um, what we do is another aspect of our content. Like, so procedures, smile transformations, whatever it may be. Um, and then also I think a, a, a part of it is like what's possible and what's out there because some people have no concept of what's even possible or where to even go like with their smile or with their general dentistry or, or in general with their oral health. So content I've heard through other people, it could be educational and like entertainment or emotional. And so for content creation ideas for me, like I think it was like Gary Vaynerchuk who said, document, don't create. Right. And so that, that really sticks out for me because when I think of creation, 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 that can be exhausting. That can be like, you're, you're really straining, but document means, Hey, I'm on this journey. Um, these people are on this journey with me, my team, these patients, let's document this, it, you know, it could be a procedure, it could be our experience in the office, it could be your journey as a dentist, it could be your, your journey as an uh, entrepreneur, it could be your journey as a, a father or a, a husband, you know, or it could be a combination of all these things. Um, so I think I think of that a lot, document, don't create. And then the other thing I would say is with 
content ideas, there's, there's platforms or searches like Google Trends. Like if you just like go to Google and type in Google Trends, it'll take you to Google's website where you just enter a word, a keyword. So it could be like implants or sleep apnea or veneers. And then you'll start to see, and you can set in the parameters. It could be a year worth of searches, six months, whatever parameters. And you can see what the fastest rising searches are are in related to that term, you know? So for veneers, for example, if I looked up veneers on Google Trends, the top searches in the past 24 hours would be um, why are veneers expensive? How much do they cost? How much teeth are shaven for veneers? And so I could literally spend hours mining this data for um, content ideas if I wanted to answer these questions. The other thing too is, um, I think it's, let me see, I think it's called an, answerthepublic.com. Ask the public. Yeah, ask the public, answer the public, one of those. And you can just type in a keyword and literally it'll spew out the who, what, when, why, where around a procedure. So like literally on my desk is 80 questions about veneers yeah, that people have Yeah, it gives you this whole searched. thing, yeah. So I, like, for example, yep. I just did veneers in Google Trends and uh, yeah. here's what popped up. Smart smile veneers. I don't know what that, okay. that is. It's like a snap on smile. Yeah. Okay. Do they shave your teeth for veneers? So to yeah. me, uh, so I would do a video answering, literally answering that question. And I would title the video, do they shave your teeth for veneers? And I would talk about that. How much is it mm -hmm. to get veneers? Shiny smile yeah. re veneer reviews and do, do veneers re ruin your teeth? So I, of those five, I see three that I'm very comfortable answering and would yes. con consider educational. And I, I, again, I would look at it that I would create a video, I would sit in front of my webcam. I mean, I have a much fancier mm -hmm. webcam than probably the person, yeah. most people, but I would sit in front of my webcam, I would answer the question, I would get that transcribed, I would turn that into a blog post, I'd create the video, yep. I'd take the three minute video, turn it into some 30 second clips, I'd put that out on social media, I'd put the big clip on YouTube, put the big clip on IGTV, put the big clip on um, uh, Facebook Watch, and uh, put it obviously put it on my website, and that over time is building your SEO and everything. Do I kind of have it right? You have it 100% right. Everything you said, taking a piece of content and splitting it into, you know, so many different platforms um, and just keeping consistent with it. You know, like the question of, you know, do you shave teeth for veneers or how much? I mean, there's so many iterations of that question too yeah. that you can, are you you can answer colors? that question. Like, like, are you changing yeah. colors? Are you closing gaps? Are you moving the teeth out? Yeah. Or do you have crooked teeth? Are you doing instant orthodontics? Yeah. I mean, like every dentist knows the three things. And you can honestly just do shave teeth, yeah. do shave teeth for veneers, can be a three-part series. It can be three different blog yeah. posts. I mean, it's yeah. anyway. But then, you know, there's, there's, there's questions around why is that even a question, right? So right. do they shave, do you shave teeth? It's because they've probably seen teeth that were overly shaven down. Right. Do veneers ruin your teeth? It's probably because, and so referencing that to like, this is what other people do, this is what I do. I mean, that's huge, right? right. So we heard um, one person had their teeth ruined. But sometimes so. we have to shave, yeah. sometimes we yeah. have to make them teepees. Yeah. Oh no, no, 100%, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we do, we do, we do. But, but, but it's answering the questions in, consumer friendly terms right. and, and, and from a viewpoint from a consumer, right? Like we're so used to answering it as a dentist and just like taking a step back and like answering it as like a friend or advisor who happens to be a dentist, right? So um, I think like you, everything you said is 100%. I love your plan. <laughs> Well, before I just need somebody to do my plan <laughs> for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so before T Bone has a couple pod questions from his interview mm -hmm. deck for you. Typically, if you were here, we'd have you draw the questions, but we've drawn a couple sure. for you. Do you have any Thank suggestions you. or any ways that Dennis can help use to get started? Whether how it can be... you help them? Yeah. How good. So, um, I mean, we, I mentioned earlier, like if they follow follow me on Instagram, it's at Tejas Patel DDS. Um, or TikTok too, but mostly uh, TikTok would be at Dr. Tejas Patel, but Instagram would be at Tejas Patel DDS. Follow me on Instagram. I am planning on launching like a cosmetic dentistry course, uh, veneer course online for people interested in cosmetic dentistry because we have tons of dentists 
reach out. Uh, since we do show procedures and steps, people are like, how do you do that? Why do you do that? I have veneers popping off. Like, you know, how can I, how can that not happen? So I'm going to launch a veneer course, but then also I do plan on launching like some sort of social media for dentists, uh, ebook or course, because there's so many questions around it. Like, yeah. I, I just had something pop into my head and I'm sorry. I got to yeah. say it. Cause be I joke. Great. Go for it. So the easiest answer to how do I deal with veneers popping off is just work on out of town people. So <laughs> other people's problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So, That's like, too easy to say. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like somebody very early in my career when, when etching was the thing, you know, and they're yeah. like, how do you deal with sensitivity? I'm like, I just don't ask my patients. And then <laughs> sensitivity doesn't exist if you don't ask them. They don't know anything. that that's a problem. Um, all right. I got a couple of more questions and I, I want to kind of ask a final question. Meredith okay. is telling me to wrap up, but I got. I, I, got, didn't, I didn't tell you to wrap up. I know, up. but I can, I, okay. I'm just. I, all right. Two things. One is around team. How do you get them involved? And if they don't get involved, do you get new ones? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's answer that one first, then I'll come to the second. Yes. <laughs> so how do you get them involved? And um, if you don't, if they I don't think... get involved, are you accepting of that? How do you mo motivate I mean, them? Maybe I, I, you to can't get... motivate people that don't want to do things. I'm convinced. Yeah. I mean, I will say, like you know, I have. It, it does take time, just like it would take Dennis to comfortable be you know, to be comfortable to be on camera, you know, I think it would take time for certain team members to be comfortable on camera. So I would, before I would like let them go and find someone new, like I would just want to make sure like that's not the thing. If they're down to like record and help out in little ways or even just post, that's still helping. You know, that's still helping if they can put the before and after image together and put it up on Facebook and then write the little caption with the call to action. That's still helping on social media. I would say that's um, helping more. Yeah, that's a lot. I think oh. being in it is oh, easier it is. than doing the hard work. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, I, I think, and just like talking to the team of just saying, hey, I just like implementing anything. Like if they were going to implement, implement sleep app, now you, you'd have to talk with the team. This is, this is what we plan to do. This is my goal a year from now. This is, these are the steps I want to take. And so the same thing with social media, if you're going to commit to it and be posting, um, just telling them it's going to be part of the practice and, you know, they might be in certain photos or video and things like that and just making sure they're okay with that. It is part of, I think, the way things are going. Um, if someone was just not on board with it, um, then I probably <laughs> would look for someone new. So um, my, my but, point in, in, in saying that is, is certainly we want to try and, and all of that. Oh, hundred. Yes. It, it yes. is, it is an expectation of employment in your practice that they need to play a part in doing all like in other words you can, i assume you can't have somebody in your practice that says i can't be on i can't be on social media correct i mean it's it just that's just not it's our practice i mean if that if 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 100 they're just like i don't know i mean there's some weird stories out there but if there's something like that they couldn't be on social media for or whatever then yes, like I would, if they're I would in FBI them, protection so. or something, I get it. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> sure, like extenuating circumstances, yeah. but I, you know, yeah. anyway. All right, the ne last thing I want to talk about, then I'm going to ask you my s three silly questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, is I want to have a quick conversation around fees because oftentimes mm -hmm. people think of getting people from out of town or doing all of this is that you have to charge lower fees. And my argument is that you can charge higher fees when you set yourself up as a sought after expert. I agree. I mean, we charge the same for in town or out of town. Um, Why don't we you have more? Like just, I mean, I, I, we are bumping up our fees in, across the board. Um, I, I, I haven't thought of that, but I mean, I, I could. I mean, I don't think there's anything that, that's holding us back from it because well, it, it does How about this? So, okay, that's mm -hmm. fine that you don't charge a different fee, but would you say that your mm -hmm. fees are different than most people around you? Are you less expensive, equally ex as, mm -hmm. as costly as others, or more, more costly than others in your market? Like, people I think aren't coming I to be... Austin, Texas because it's like going to Costa Rica to get it done. No, yeah, but say, say for but example, we LA. have people from California. Right. Yeah, yeah, from L.A., um, you know, if they're, if they're charging, I don't know what they, maybe like 2000 and up per veneer, like our fee is like 1600 per veneer. 
Okay. So for them, that's maybe enough to, well, you're ch- to we're justify. We're all cheap compared to Appa, who's every, who should be everybody's standard bearer. Okay, yeah, we should yeah. all so, I mean, love that guy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Compared to he four thousand and two, yes, I'm yeah. like we're significantly like lower, you know. But um, and by the way, that could be content. I mean, not that I would encourage anybody to do content around that, but that can sure. be content. Is you can build content around because listen, when I started, and you're my age, so you started around the same time. Yeah. People thought of travel dentistry as going to L.A. or New York. It wasn't right. travel dentistry. Wasn't Austin, Texas. Like literally, I yeah. remember talking to my wife about how I wanted to be a destination for cosmetics, mm-hmm. and my wife was yes. like, "Then you need yeah. to move to Miami, not Raleigh, North Carolina." And that yeah. that yeah. is gone today. People 100%. With, our, with our yeah. point-to-point system of airlines, you can you can mm-hmm. do this as long as you're relatively yeah. easy to get to. Yes. You can do this anywhere. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, as long as, like you said, as long as you're relatively easy to get to, maybe not too far away from the airport, well, that, that doesn't really even matter. Like, 30 if they trust minutes, you. An hour. Yeah, hour. yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Just like you would travel to, for a CE course. I mean, I feel like that's the same same thing. You know, if you find value in it, you, you'll travel for it. Um, but I feel, I feel like our fees are either competitive or on the higher end in, in our area. Okay. But not, like, outlandish. All right. What percentage of your people uh, finance their work? Um, Rough guess. I'd, I'd say maybe like 40 to 50% okay. maybe. So half. There's a lot of care credit. There's okay. a lot of care credit going on in over here. <laughs> good, 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 good. Do you, and do you think that's uh, – okay. All right. I just wanted to know because, again, I, I think people have this perception that you cater oh. to rich people, that you, you yes. know, celebrities, and, and it's, it's, it's simply, it's simply not yeah. true. I mean, you know, 50% yeah. of your people needing financing tells me it's not true. Right. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say that like my, my wife was looking at our page rec- our Instagram page feed recently, and she's like, you know, what's cool about your page is it looks like you work on everyday people. And I actually like want that. You know, we have diversity right. on our page. Um, you know, we have diversity and it just looks like everyday people who just have like nicer smiles, you know, well, you skew a little um, bit younger, I would say. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely younger. You know, I'd say, you know, you know, 25 to, to 40 is kind of like that window of a market for us. Um, but it's surprising that, yeah, I mean, it yeah. used to be like, if I didn't work a at a dental older. office, I would want to fly there and get mine done. And I'm 28. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. I would say. <laughs> That would be your market. I think to, to be honest, like for cosmetic, like veneers, veneers are kind of like going to become like Botox. Like, I think it's just going to be like so regular that most people are going to have them. Right. I think it's just yeah, a time. I think so too. And I have friends that live here and live in Texas that are liking your posts that don't work they in dental. They live in Tejas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That don't work in dental that are probably going to be your patients. <laughs> Oh, cool. Thank you. I appreciate so, that. See, like, see how they can spread? fly here. We have nonstop <laughs> from every major city in, in Texas to I'm Raleigh, saying, North Carolina. They live here. I mean, come on. But I've just seen him on his page yeah, liking no, and stuff. So that's really cool that it's like, yeah. you know, getting around like that. That's, that's how the game works. Mm-hmm. Well, all right. I got three questions for you. Uh, I have not Let's told you what they are. I'm going to shuffle them no. up, but I'm going to get through okay. all three of them. Uh, they're just fun questions. I have this th- a product called Poddex, which are like little I'll interview questions uh, cool. for people. So uh, this is an interview deck, second edition. Uh, this is like that. What's that game from Amazon I like to play? The inappropriate Table game? Text oh. or something. Car- cards cards for humanity. humanity. Yeah, yeah. 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 I like, I like that. Yeah. I, I like that. I wanted Except to- these are not um, inappropriate. Yeah, these aren't anything okay. like I'd that. I okay? PG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I try to get on PG all, as quickly as yeah. I can. <laughs> Uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, who would you most like to sit next to on a 10 hour flight and why? Barack Obama. Um, because I don't know. I think I find him as a very interesting and cool person. Um, I think just imploring like all he's learned about leadership and execution, I think about like leading teams and, and getting, people of different ideologies to work together. I think that's invaluable. Um, the fact that he's a father, uh, seems like he has a successful marriage and uh, a father to two daughters, just like myself. I, I feel like I'd, I'd have a lot to talk to him about. That's awesome. 
Have you wa- have you listened to the podcast called The Making of uh, The Making of Obama? Yes, yes, it's phenomenal. Yeah, it's really good. That's yes. really good. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, yeah, The Making of Obama, and they have one on The Making of Oprah. Oprah. That's uh, they're both they're both fantastic. Yeah, yeah and like the one on Beyonce is really good too. I haven't done that one. I, I'm All not. Right. I'm not yeah. really a big Beyonce fan. Yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, or the Kardashians. Anybody <laughs> whose life is made around uh, the butt is not <laughs> my kind of person. You know, just <laughs> I'm just saying that. <laughs> Why they had an advantage over you? Yeah, man. <laughs> you had to work and, harder because you didn't have hairs. Okay, you didn't have that butt. Like <laughs> What things do you do every day that you wish could be automated? Um, social media. <laughs> well, it is automated. It's called other human beings. Content well, you creation. Pay them. You know, like, yeah. Like, yeah. And the ideas. Yeah. I wish yeah, feeding I my dogs like a... and taking them to the bathroom was automated. Oh, that. That would be that'd probably be number one, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's like a full time job taking care of dogs when you have. Dude, I just got in trouble for my for. I'm pretty sure my wife's dog pooped, and I got in trouble <laughs> that my dog. I'm pretty, pooped. It might have been mine. And it might have been Meredith's dog that pooped in my house, it's and both, I got in trouble. Yeah, all the dogs in my house, which we have two, are both my dogs. So I mean, I have to take full responsibility for everything. Uh, so, last uh, question. This was my question yes. for you. Okay. Do you have any superstitions? Um, uh, I think the only one, like, I don't know, like growing up, my dad always like made me do like, or made me and my brother do like, and he does it too, like little prayers in the car before he drives. Okay. Um, I do so that before I thing, fly. Just like, yeah. Just for like a safe journey kind of thing. Um, so that's the only thing. Yeah. I have one last question. Yes. Since your last name is Patel. <laughs> do, you, do you own motels? No. Your parent? Come on! What kind of parents do you have that they don't own? No, motels? they don't. They don't. Like we're zero. We're zero close to that. You're like sure. the only one. They're not. They're not doctors. They're not into motels either. Yeah. They must be engineers. They must be. No, not no. even. No. Unbelievable. The no. simple folk. Simple folk. <laughs> Tejas, uh, how can our listeners get in touch with you? I know they have lots of questions. They want to pick your brain about how they can get started, do this stuff, ask about your future courses, uh, just, just you know, as they get into hurdles. Uh, what's the best way to get in touch with you? I would say on Instagram, at Tejas Patel DDS, and just DM us. Just DM us, and then we'll kind of go from there, for sure. All right, perfect. Uh, I'm going to have you stick around and we'll say goodbye to everybody and we'll see you guys next week on the T-Bone Speaks podcast. Thanks so much for listening to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal. Remember to keep striving for excellence and we'll catch you on the next episode.